Hello and welcome to Between Friends. Today's episode is all about stretchy knits and how to handle them. And I have a great guest. Many of you have already met her. And uh, if you haven't, you're really in for a treat. So I would like to welcome Ashley Jones. She's our lead educator here at Dime. She's been with us for a number of years and she's broadcasting today from Key Largo, Florida. So welcome, Ashley. Hi, thank you, Eileen. It's always good to be here. I love your festive hat. I like my festive hat. I know. Yeah. I fell behind on my costume. I know. I'm all ready for the 4th of July. Woohoo! I love it. I love it. I can't Three believe it. Three-day weekend. I know. Yeah. People are excited. Yeah. And, you know, we have to say hello to some people. Go ahead. Yeah, absolutely. I was going to say, hopefully they're using their long weekend to do some fun sewing and embroidery. Yeah. Marjorie Hirschberger is piping in. She's in Lancaster where it's super hot and muggy and uh, she wishes she was at the shore. Now, if you're from that area of the country, you know the shore means the New Jersey coast. Yeah. So Jersey Shore, MTV trashed it, but it's beautiful. <laughs> actually, it's beautiful. And uh, oh, we have a friend in from Wisconsin, Diana yeah. Mullins Atkinson, another one of our educators yeah. in Cape Cod. I'll bet it's cool on the, co on the Cape today. I hope so. Isn't it fun? We have people from Washington State, love all it. over Miami, Normus in Miami, Miami, and our good friend Sue Brown from OML Embroidery um, up in Canada. She's here today. It's awesome. Oh, oh well, Linda Marshall wishes she was in Key Largo, but she's in <laughs> New Orleans. That's not, that's pretty that's fun. That's not too far and similar yeah. weather, I'll tell you yeah. that. <laughs> I know. It's awesome. Yeah. It's awesome. Patty says it's uh, hot in Omaha. Yeah, it's hot everywhere, right, folks? It just is. Absolutely. Diamond Crystal. Oh, that's a fun name, Diamond Crystal. It is. Yeah. I wonder if she sells jewelry. <laughs> you never know. Hot and humid Oklahoma, Opelika, yeah. Florida. See more Florida people. Hello, yeah. Isabel Brian. Hi. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Brian. And here's Lisa Horn Knight from Laporte, Texas. Hi. Yeah. So fun. So Ashley, you know, stretchy knits, right? Summertime. That's what right. we're living in is stretchy knits, right? I have a t-shirt yeah, on. You have a t-shirt on. Yep. yep. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. They're so comfortable to wear. And so we want to all feel comfortable when we're dressed. But uh, when someone else asks us to embroider on them or we want to add embroidery, sometimes we're a little timid um, because we know that the stretch can pose a challenge. So um, yeah. we've got some... Uh, some information that hopefully will help everyone right. today with stitching on their, their knits. So um, whether it's a knit shirt or um, even like the technical type of fabric or the dry fit fabric, I think is one of the brand names. Um, we sometimes refer to them as performance wear or sports wear. Yeah. Um, some of those uh, items, Eileen, are so flimsy, like and slippery. Right. And, you know, it's just, just, poses a challenge to yeah. even handle to get into the embroidery hoop. And then the embroidery process, of course, sometimes right. reveals some, you know, undesirable results. Yeah. And a lot of those knits are kind of clingy, you know, and, and they're also favored by, you know, a lot of men, right? Golf wear mm -hmm. and, you know, all of those kind of athletic clothing. Right. Absolutely. My and husband so, loves running in those yeah. type of clothes because they're much cooler. He's a very hot natured person. So mm -hmm. he likes the, you know, thinnest, most breathable. Mm -hmm. um, luckily for me, Eileen, he doesn't ask me to embroider all over those. So I get right. the pass right. on that. <laughs> well, you know, there's sometimes a lot of pressure, right, in embroidering for, you know, uh, a family member who right. just purchased, you know, maybe a beautiful $60, $75, you know, golf shirt, and they hand it to you and say, can you put, you know, X on this, right? Well, hopefully not an X, but right. you know, something right. else. And, you know, the pressure, right? Absolutely. Well, and not just the pressure because the fabric is a challenge, but the pressure yes. because you only have one. Right. And so yes. you definitely don't want to to mess that up. So I, I think that's where I might have them to sign that disclaimer form, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, many years ago when I was teaching on the road, I met a woman who said, oh, I just told my husband, my machine doesn't do menswear. <laughs> I love that. I love uh, that. 
Yeah. <laughs> it's adorable. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. NC Lawson says she, she wants to know why I'm wearing that rain hat. It's not really a rain hat. It's, you know, glitter. It's for the 4th of July, but I could take it off. Yeah. <laughs> not really a hat person, but it's just a, a, yeah. Jennifer Alexander says nothing to practice on, you know, because, right. well, there's a tip, right? So if you ruin one, Keep that garment and practice on it for the rest of your days, right? Every Absolutely. every embroidery design that you're going to stitch on that type of fabric, you can test on the one that you ruined. Or you could purchase, you know, at a thrift store, a secondhand store, you know, that kind of thing. And uh, just go, don't worry about size or color or anything. You're yeah. just looking for that right fabric that is identical or as close to possible um, as the, you know, special garment that you're going to be working on. And that is what I do whenever my husband gets rid of his running clothes. Mm -hmm. um, normally we just take those to Goodwill or Salvation Army or something, but mm -hmm. I usually pick through there and see what strange fabrics we have before we decide yeah. to give things away. And that's exactly yeah. what I do with them, Eileen, is I just cut them up and just save the the fabric yeah. for testing purposes. Smart. Yes, Smart. yes. Exactly. Yeah. Sometimes educational, like we're talking about today. And actually one of the samples that I'm going to be showing is something that I cut up of his that mm -hmm. was going to go out. And I it's the slipperiest, yeah. thinnest stuff that I could get yeah. my hands on. So I thought great one to play with. Yeah, that's awesome. Let's see. Sue Brown says going to thrift stores is a great place to find the fabric types mm -hmm. you're looking for. It is, you know, they're, they're a great resource and, you know, many people just shop there anyway. I know that, um, you know, um, lots of young people only buy secondhand. Yeah. We won't know. I, me, I agree with, and with, with our skills for embroidery, it's a great way to take a garment and upcycle it and turn it into new anyway, because we have so many things we can do with our embroidery machine. So I think right. that's a great way to do your shopping. Yeah. It's awesome. Okay. So, you, uh, well, first off, let's show them what is uh, the, the product of the week, right? That yeah. is yes. bringing us the, um, the special. So that is our embroiderer's helper. And, and there's actually three different tools involved there. And Ashley's going to go through all of them. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so we're really focusing on stretchy fabrics because on embroiderer's helper, you know, it, it mainly it's t-shirts, right? T-shirts, sweatshirts, that kind of thing. So they're almost always knit fabrics that uh, you would use that for. Right. But also let's not forget that this week is also Hoopapalooza. This is the actual last day of Hoopapalooza that's oh. been with us all month long in June. And that's the special on all hoops, whether it's sticky hoops monster, or snap hoop monster for both multi-needle and um, single needle machines. So take advantage of that. Today's the last day. But the Embroiderer's Helper is on sale all week. All right, Ashley, show us what you got, girl. Okay, let's start. Right. So um, I've got some things under my camera I'm going to start with, kind of just talking about the designs and the fabric. So about a month ago, um, I was on Facebook Live. Um, Eileen allowed me to host, and I did a Can You Embroider on that, and it was swimwear that I was stitching on. So if you go back and look at that presentation, I actually was stitching on swimwear. And as we know, swimwear is a knit, and it's four-way stretch. So, um, I mean, we really should call it like six-way stretch because it's really stretchy in all directions. Wow. And, and so um, stitching on that, Eileen, was definitely a challenge, but it was a learning experience for me. We talked about swimsuits need to stretch across the body sometimes. So sometimes you actually need to stretch your fabric a little bit mm -hmm. when you're hooping it. Mm -hmm. And not really stretching, I guess, really um, putting tension on it is the better yeah. word. Mm -hmm. So. So uh, I did this uh, little one here where we put some tension so that when it's stretched across the body. Now, I've got this example here because I wanted to show you that not every design is really good for every fabric. I know we talk about that regularly, but look at the number of, uh, well, you can't tell the number, but look at, this is all fill stitches and look at all the puckers around there. Yeah. Uh, I mean, when, you stretch that, it, when you stretch that, you know, the whale is not going to stretch. Right? Exactly. That's so look, a very yeah. good point. Yeah. So, you know, you're stretching it across here, but you mm -hmm. still got all those puckers up top. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So really your design makes a huge um, difference in the quality of the stitch out. Right. Um, yep. And 
So what I did, uh, Eileen, was I actually took a design that really wasn't perfect for this project. I left my stabilizer on here so I could show you guys what I was working on. Now, this is that shirt I told you that my husband was getting rid of and I just cut it up. This fabric is so flimsy and slippery. It just is not ideal for embroidery. So yeah. what I did was I wanted to share with everyone, Eileen, just kind of you know, some logical thought process to kind of help. I used in this instance, a no-show stabilizer, which is, uh, you know, one of the choices you certainly can use. And it's probably one that most people would have on hand. I'm going to talk about another one in a bit, but I just hooped uh, one layer of the fabric and one layer of the stabilizer. This is a polyester fabric. So I didn't want to use a fusible because it's not really a fabric that we want to touch to our iron. Um, and you can see that this is, the worst one. This yellow one, I've got really bad puckers. I chose a design that had satin and fill stitches because I wanted to see how they both reacted. Um, but it's it's really bad. And so if I bring it up a little bit closer, maybe you can see, I'm going to try not to pull on it, um, but you can see all around there really bad puckers. So what I did, because this is so slippery and it was moving around as the machine was moving, I just took one step further and I used mm -hmm. adhesive spray. I just mm -hmm. sprayed the stabilizer and used adhesive spray to hold this in place. And it did so much better just with that one addition. But I still mm -hmm. had some uh, areas that, you know, still had some puckering. So I thought, mm hmm. Maybe I could do one better. We've heard from Deborah Jones and Eileen for years about floating an extra piece of stabilizer underneath. So that's what I did here. So I used the spray adhesive with the uh, stabilizer of choice, which was the no-show stabilizer. And as it was stitching, I just floated a piece of tearaway stabilizer. And you can see this is just a tearaway that I floated underneath. And just that little bit of extra um, made this the absolute best stitch out of all three. And uh, I think it actually looks pretty good. I would call that uh, good enough to, to, to give to someone or if someone was asking me to do it for them. Uh, so that was kind of my logic behind this. You know, I wanted to see, you know, this is a recommended recommended stabilizer for knits. Um, and so I just kind of wanted to, to show everyone that, you know, yes, you may be using the right stabilizer, but it may be something as simple as keeping this from moving around while you're stitching. And, um, you know, commercial embroiderers all the time, they use adhesive spray, but, you know, they do a lot of hooping. So they may get their hooping technique perfect the first time and not need anything additional. But for those of us at home, sometimes we have to get creative and figure out ways to, you know, get our design to work for us. So what do you think? Right. Kate? Yeah, well, you know, it's interesting, Ashley, how you approach that, because, you know, this is our business, right? We do this right. all the time. And um, I have to tell you, though, as you're speaking, I'm kind of hearing some of Deborah Jones's advice, you know, <laughs> that you're sharing with others. Yeah. And, um, you know, I, she most certainly is in between my ears all the time, right? You know, when I'm in my abroad, you know, well, what would Deborah do, right? And yeah, so right. she does use logic. She applies that to every embroidery project that she does. But, you know, our friends, our viewers are probably not going to, you know, do three samples like that. So right. what we would encourage you to do is to think through those steps, right? Like your first mm -hmm. inclination is, oh, to go and grab that no-show mesh. You know you're not going to select a fusible because of the polyester uh, makeup of the poly fabric. So, you know, then then just stop and think, well, what would make that more secure? And the spray adhesive was a great idea. Just great. Mm -hmm. And of course, floating that stable. So you hooped the um, that no show mesh and the fabric itself. You know, now they're right. sprayed. So they're kind of one unit and you hooped all that together. And then you slid that tear away underneath the hoop. So that's right. not hooped. It, exactly. Yeah, it was, I started watching, you know, and that is one thing that, you know, I've heard for years is, you know, when you're watching your design switch out, we all do it, right? Eileen, we love to watch it show. So, and sometimes we see the puckers as they are actually happening. And then we're already thinking, oh, this is going to be horrible. Like, what am I going to do? Well, instead of continuing to watch it happen, 
stop it at that point and then float that stabilizer underneath. And it's just giving you that extra stability to hope prevent those puckers going right. forward through the same design that you're sitting there watching. Yeah. So, right. And, and I did a similar test here, only I didn't have to do the extra step. So, um, uh, the nice thing about working uh, for Dime is that I do have access to a variety of different stabilizers. And there are three different ones that we recommend for knits. The No Show uh, stabilizer is one of them. Uh, Poly Pro is the other one. I thought I had a little snippet of it here, but I'll show you the back of this one in just a minute. And then there's a um, another stabilizer that's a stretchy knit stabilizer that's actually a woven stabilizer. Now, I only tested two here, um, but what I did with this shirt, I did the same thing. So instead of having to do three of the no show, I stitched the first one with one uh, piece of the polypropylene a stabilizer, which is another one that we recommend for tech fabrics. Um, and I still, and this one actually right away, I was very pleased with it, except for there's a little bit of puckering around the edges here. And so I did kind of that same logic on this side. The only thing I did different was using that spray adhesive uh, to just hold it in place. You know, this stuff is just, I mean, it is so slippery. It's moving around in the hoop and doing all kinds of crazy stuff. So I just thought that that would help give me stability because our iron-on stabilizer also helps uh, add stability. So this is what that polypropylene uh, stabilizer uh, looks like. Yeah, um, it is a cutaway stabilizer. So it does remain in the garment, which is definitely something that you you want. So those were my two choices. So with this example of the actual golf shirt, Eileen, I felt like I made a better stabilizer choice right away um, because I didn't have to even float underneath this fabric to get that really nice result. So right. um, point being that, you know, we don't always have the right stabilizer to use. So we kind of work with what we've got. But if you have the right stabilizer, you need less, you know, right. um, if you're using that correct stabilizer. So so that was the the two that I that I tested in the same kind of thought process. And I, I definitely agree with you, you know, used to, I wouldn't stitch, you know, uh, two or three samples unless it was something like we talked about. Somebody asked me to embroider, they only have right. one. And yeah. if I can find similar fabric, I would have tested until I was happy with, you know, those results. So. Right. Well, we do have several questions. So the first one is yeah. what kind of spray adhesive? Well, we really like the 505 here. Yeah. That's our fave. So um, we find that it's just um, doesn't gum up the needle and eventually dries and leaves no residue, right? Yep. That's what we love and it, about it. And that. it's, yeah. And the other thing I like about it, some other sprays I've used in the past, they are so temporary that I feel like once I get it hooped and I'm at the embroidery machine, that it's not sticky right. anymore. Yeah. And whereas this one is definitely more, um, you know, adhesive for a little bit longer, I could even right. still fill it, you know, when I peeled the stabilizer off the back of the yeah. uh, golf shirt, I could still mm -hmm. feel that tackiness. And of course, mm -hmm. you know, that'll go away. Um, right. since it's temporary. So. so let's listen to Becky Mums here. So she says yeah. she would not have thought that extra stabilizer would be needed on such a small design. So she's mm. talking about the bike. So I'm going to yeah. venture here a little bit and then you can respond. Um, yeah. So sometimes an additional layer of stabilizer is not really because of the size of the design, but maybe you want to have those nice crisp outlines on on the satin, the wheels. And, you know, that was all satins, that bike. The, so, yeah, satins for the wheels. And then yeah. the, the little guy was fill stitches. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, um, so that's why I would have added that extra layer of tear away, just so those outlines are really nice and crisp. Right. That's the other the other thing on the design, Eileen, is this design actually was not well digitized for this type of fabric. Right. And I know that because I watched it on my you know, software before I ever even got to the machine. But mm -hmm. of course, since I'm trying to show what's going yeah. on, I wanted to go forward with it because I think this is something that us uh, embroiderers that are asked by, like you said, family or friends to stitch something. They want a certain design on a certain item and they're not always compatible. Like we 
you know, know that that's not a good design choice, but it's the design that they want. But this particular one, like you said, Eileen, the satin uh, stitches on the wheels. Mm -hmm. um, I noticed whenever I did my uh, watch my slow reader on my software that there is not proper underlay in those satin stitches for this type of fabric. There was mm -hmm. underlay, but it was just a center run underlay. Mm -hmm. And that's not really the best choice of underlay um, for this fabric that is flimsy, slippery, stretchy in all directions. Mm -hmm. But I didn't change a thing, Eileen. I just wanted to show that you can get good results if you just kind of think about the process. This is one of the most unstable type of fabrics that we are asked to stitch on. And mm -hmm. so if we think of our stabilizer as kind of picking up the slack, like we need our stabilizer, you know, to, to help us make this more stable. And right. uh, so that was, you know, kind of my thought process as I was, was going through, but definitely not the best design. Now this design here, I actually adjusted myself and my software to make sure that it was a better fit for this type of material um, uh, too. And so you're looking at one, uh, you know, choice of stabilizer. That's probably the better choice in the beginning, as well as a design that has, uh, you know, been, adjusted for such an unstable fabric. Um, right. So many, many viewers don't have software or maybe right. they're not really familiar with changing densities and, and out, you know, uh, distance of, or size of underlay, yeah. that type of adjustments that can be made in software. But everyone should know that truly 80% of embroidery designs that you purchase just out there on the web or wherever mm -hmm. they're, they are digitized for cotton fabric they're not digitized for t-shirts. So, you know, just know that, right? Just know that. Right. Okay. So right. let's see. Yeah. Ann Hedricks wants to know, did you hoop or float the shirt? Boy, I never float. Never float. float. I don't shirt. either, Eileen. I never float unless it is absolutely uh, necessary. And I have an example coming up where I stitched just right along the, the collar right. of a shirt. And right. That I needed uh, to use adhesive stabilizer, but I'm with you. I don't ever yeah. float. The, right. the the hoop is designed, whether it's your snap hoop monster or your standard hoop, it's designed to hold the, you know, tension on that fabric so that you yeah. get the best stitch out. So Right. And I think the shirt that you're wearing, you didn't hoop either. But I did anyway. not. Yeah. And that was another, uh, I wore this specifically because this is one of Eileen's neckline designs. Mm -hmm. And this one um, is just bold run stitches, which, you know, when you're choosing a design for a t-shirt, oh man, this was like perfect. Yeah. It needed minimal stabilization because it's mm -hmm. such a light, airy design. And, and it was specifically designed, right, Eileen, for knits. That was your mm -hmm. idea, right? Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, that was the name of the collection, T-shirt makeover. So, yeah. you know, it was digitized for T-shirts. Okay, so let's see. Risa Ranke, our friend up north, wants to know what size needles do you normally use with knits? Well, it's not so much the size, it's the point, right? Right, right. Absolutely. So um, so I use a an embroidery needle that is just a universal type embroidery needle. And so it really has kind of a rounded point to it. So it's not a sharp point embroidery needle. We want our needle to slip between the fibers and not pierce the fibers of our knits and leave a hole. <laughs> right. So if you have a choice, you know, ballpoint is the rounded tip mm -hmm. and that's what you would use on knits and sharps are what you use on woven fabrics, mm -hmm. stable fabrics that are not, you know, uh, knitted like t-shirts are, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So Mary Furman wants to know, would a sticky hoop work for this? So, yeah. I mean, we what we like to hoop. So I'm right. not a big fan of sticky stabilizer on garments <laughs> because I like, you know, I want to be able to remove all of that stabilizer and sticky doesn't, right. you know, it's, it does tear away, but I, I don't know. I, I just like to do <laughs> yeah, it. Right. And then if you use the wash away uh, adhesive one, um, then you have no stabilizer left in, in, in a garment that you should have some stabilizer remaining in your your knits so that the design itself looks great forever. Right. And so, um, so yeah. And so then I tend to do Eileen and what I did on one of the shirts that's coming up was because I needed to use the adhesive stabilizer, I then added another uh, stabilizer that was going to stay forever. So mm -hmm. if, okay. if I use the adhesive, that's what I do, which is what we did on this example here too. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Okay. And so Darlene Richards wants to know, is the poly, propylene soft on the skin? 
It is, uh, I would say that it is a little firmer and stiffer than the no-show stabilizer, but to me, it is not so much, uh, it's not as stiff as like a heavy cutaway. So mm -hmm. I feel like it's in between. So, um, and I think it's going to be comfortable to wear. So yeah. I don't okay. think it would be an issue. Good. And then Rita wants to know, does 505, I think she means have an, an odor. And mm -hmm. uh, no, no odor. It, it's mm -mm. odorless. Yeah. <laughs> and I can vouch for that. I, I'm yeah. a, um, I have migraines and, and smells trigger uh, for me sometimes. And yeah. I don't smell anything with the 505 spray. So, yeah. Oh, and Deborah Jones piped in and she says, yes, the polypropylene is soft. It's pretty soft. Yeah. Well, she would know. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So let's see. Um, and Deborah also had a great tip on when you're ordering digitizing, order for unstable knits, Ooh. unstable fabrics, knits, and they will also work on fabric, uh, stable fabrics. Excellent oh, tip, Deborah. Thank you so much. That is a good idea. Yeah. Oh, I love that. That's awesome. Okay. So, so digitize for the worst case scenario, I think is that's a good way yeah. to look at it, you think? Yes. And then you'll know that, yeah. you know, you, you'll have confidence when you go to a stable fabric. Okay. Right. Let's see. And Dee Johnson wants to know, do you use a monster or a standard hoop for knits? So I've actually used both and it really is going to depend on what you uh, prefer to use. Some people like to use the magnetic hoops because they're, um, you know, easier to hoop with, obviously. So, but I've done both. I will tell you on this thing right here, because it's so slippery. I did put that in my standard hoop. I mean, it's just sheer. I mean, I can see through it. So I did standard yeah. hoop on that, but you're like your cotton knits, um, Eileen, I don't know about you, but to me, they're a little, um, there's more to them. They're, you know, it's a little beefier than these little slippery things that we're stitching on for sure. athletic wear. Yeah. I, so. And me, I always use a magnetic hoop. Yeah. Just because it's easier. Okay. Yeah. Julia Thorne. Julie Thorne wants to say, I was told not to use rayon owner embroidery. What's your thought? Well, you know, we love polyester thread. We just love polyester thread because yeah. that's our brand, exquisite 40 weight poly. Um, we understand that uh, rayon, well, we, not that we understand, but rayon is not color fast. So, right. you know, most garments that you are going to be embroidering on outside of the wedding wow. dress needs to be laundered all the time. So, you know, we always think about the use of the garment what and whatever you're going to add to the garment must be able to withstand the, the laundering that you'll do to it. So right. um, rayon is a beautiful fiber for sure in a thread, but today's polyester is so soft and it has such a high beautiful. sheen mm -hmm. that it's just beautiful. It really yeah. is. Yeah. Yeah, awesome. I agree. Polyester. I started with rayon uh, years ago, but once I discovered polyester, I don't really stitch with rayon that much anymore. Yeah. Okay. So let's see. So we're kind of caught up on questions. Good. Good. So, yeah, I know. It's awesome. So nice to have Deborah here, right? I know. It's been a while since she's been on, on, on camera with us. <laughs> we uh, have a lot of balls in the air here at Dime, right? Right. Absolutely. So we're a bunch of hats. So, yeah. um, so on these examples that are up, um, applique is always a fantastic choice for knits because it is a lower stitch count. Uh, not to mention, if you think about an applique, you're stitching part of your uh, design onto another piece of fabric. So really you're getting even more stabilization if you think of it that way. Um, but on this example, very low stitch count. I use that uh, same no show, uh, stabilizer. Now, if my garment that I'm stitching on is heat safe, I love the fusible no-show because it kind of does what our adhesive spray did, um, just holds things in place. And I'll show you an example of that in a moment. Now, this knit, uh, this is actually a sweater knit um, and it is, uh, you know, kind of a fine fabric. <laughs> and so I used no show on this one as well. So you can see that in the back. And what I did for this one is uh, I chose a design that was a lower stitch count. So that's just a run stitch here. And then this design, um, I chose um, 
I was able to adjust it just a little bit, you know, like Eileen says, you don't, you know, not everybody has software to adjust, but I do love that I have that capability. So I was able to adjust it. And even with the things that I did um, in all reality, you can probably see that right around here, there's a little bit of puckering, but um, I was pleased with it. You know, the fact that I combined such a, you know, a, a dense design over this one, I was perfectly happy with it. This is something that I love to wear. It's on the lower half of the, um, this cardigan and um, just added a nice little special touch. So, and yeah. then actually, the before you go on, I yeah. have to tell you that, you know, they are loving that pink shirt. I, you know, we see we've got oh. a lot of Halloween brands out here. Why don't you bring that back <laughs> under camera? Yeah. So look how cute that that's is a, cool. yeah, that's an applique design that I actually bought years ago. I don't even know where it came from. It was actually before mm -hmm. I created uh, my own designs. And then I just added the little bows there. Yeah. Um, Super so, cute. Yeah. Super and this is all fabric. So I chose that uh, stripey uh, fabric for the socks there i just thought it was a perfect uh option yeah. but but yeah really cute right <laughs> right so let's um before you go on let's just yeah. answer mikey's uh, question so she says so you mean using polyester for stitching on the stretch or knits she has so much rayon thread so yeah use your rayon thread yeah. we don't expect you to throw all of your rayon thread out and you can stitch rayon thread on any mm -hmm. fabric any fiber at all, it's going to look beautiful. You will be limited in the type of laundering you can do to a rayon thread. Repeated um, washings with strong detergents can fade the thread. And I have sheets to prove that, you know, they were a beautiful blue, the embroidered border, and now they are like a very faint light blue. And I don't 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 use uh, bleach on on those sheets. So uh, just that strong detergent like Tide or something like that. And then, but of course, with bleach, it will totally bleach out the color. Right. So that's why we tell you, you know, if you're doing a lot of t-shirts, you know, you're probably going to be throwing them in the wash. If they're workout gear, you might be adding some kind of bleach. So. Okay. And I, Eileen, I had the opposite effect happen to me too. I've, I've been in your same boat where the, the color from my thread, but I stitched white rayon thread on a red fabric that I did not pre-wash. And when I washed it, then my monogram, my white monogram was kind of pinkish, you know, here and there. And so I kind of had the opposite effect uh, with that as well. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. So then you have monochromatic embroidery. Right. Awesome. Tone true. on tone. And only yeah. one thread. Yeah. I got yeah. variegated thread with just, mm -hmm. uh, you know, a, a bad fabric <laughs> and rayon thread. Okay. So uh, let's, Janice here has asked. So she's afraid to use spray adhesive. Mm -hmm. Is there a good way to avoid being overcome by the fumes and also to avoid overspray? So I have a little tool, but you can go ahead and chat about this. Ashley. Yeah. And so uh, uh, we have a tool that'll contain the spray, Janice. But then also remember about your spray adhesive. A little goes a long way. So a lot of people think that they're applying that uh, Aquanet we used to put on in the 80s. <laughs> But spray adhesive is really um, not meant to, you know, be that kind of coating. You're just doing a very light coat and it doesn't take much at all. And it's going to give you that hold if you have a good spray. So that would be my right. tip to reduce the fumes, yeah. but then also contain it. What have you got yeah. to contain it, Eileen? This is our spray tent. I know. I mean, it's so cute. Like <laughs> people cute. laugh, really? You need a spray tent? But you know what's so nice about it is it's a tent. You yeah. put... I put a piece of copy paper, just a regular sheet of paper in the bottom and put my fabric, applique, whatever it is I'm going to spray in there. And then the can literally goes right up here and I spray. So the overspray, well, frankly, there isn't any, but it would go on the walls and on that, you know, uh, paper underneath. So, you know, I think we often feel that we have to spray temporary spray adhesive like hairspray, you know, yeah. like way out here. Not so much, you know, just nice and tight. And, you know, because you really don't want to overspray and you don't need to waste it all. So, yeah, yeah that's what we do. And and I love it. I, I mean, it's just I, li I like using it. It's it's just handy. It really is. And Cece says it's a cute tent. It is a cute tent. <laughs> it is cute. <laughs> I know you have to keep it away from Barbie. 
<laughs> yeah. Oh, Margie Hersberger. She just got it and she loves it. I know. Like yeah. you probably thought, oh, why? Oh, you know, this is a crazy thing to buy. Right. But let me yeah. tell you, it's not. When you have yeah. it in your sewing room, you'll be using more. Uh, oh, yeah. Patty says she has to keep her kitties out. Definitely you have to keep your kitties out. We just and buy an extra for the kitties. Yeah. And Mary Furman says, so does the inside of the tent get super sticky after several uses? So, you know, 505 disintegrate, you know, it will evaporate eventually and disintegrate. So this is not sticky or tacky, but you know what? You are only going to use this for spray adhesive. So right. it doesn't matter what happens inside. And I put, like I said, a piece of copy paper, you know, in the bottom. Okay. I stick that in there. And, you know, after about, oh, I don't know, 20, 30 sprays, I throw that out and put another one. That's, you know, we, we're always, you know, reusing paper here, repurposing as best we can. And that's what we do. So, yeah. 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 Love the, love the spray tent. So, and, yeah. and I definitely agree. It's, it's nice to have that rather than the box. I feel like it actually yeah. does a better job. Yeah. Because uh, there's a top. Right. And, and the then, box, then, you then the box. Just flaps in and you get your hand in there <laughs> and then you can't see. Uh, yeah, it's a nightmare. Yeah. It's good. And I have used it too for um, uh, fa our fabric stabilizer that we talk about in some mm -hmm. of our presentations, the Sullivan's. If I'm spraying a little small piece and I want it good and saturated yeah. and I don't want that to get on my ironing board cover, then I spray that in there too. So I think it's a good. it's a great tool to have yeah. on hand. And, and it, you can just store it flat or collapse it small and put it in a drawer. Right. And Rita Ranke says, can you use it for spray and starch? So, yeah, yeah I mean, that's yeah. pretty similar to what you're talking about. Right. Absolutely. Can you show us how to feel it up for storage? Well, sure. You can just put the flap in and then you fold it on itself. And then I believe you can twist it yeah. back down on itself. And then it comes with a little pocket. Um, you know, a little plastic pocket or nylon pocket, I guess, then you just put it in there. And then mm -hmm. to open it back up, it pretty much just, you know, pops open. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. Can they tell we love the spray tent? So I keep yeah. mine in the drawer underneath my cutting area. I fold it up, you know, like you just showed my lane. So. Oh, wait, we have to read this one. Uh -oh. Diana Mullins. I can say <laughs> Short beats spraying in the guest bathtub and having your brother-in-law speak stick to the top. <laughs> well, that's one way to not Diana, have company. Diana, how do you know this for sure? How does she know yeah. this? <laughs> Sounds like she's experienced. Oh, so. that's hysterical, Diana. Oh, very good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so Lisa Schwartz says, it, never saw the spray tent. Very clever. We're just yeah. all about clever here, girlfriend. Let me that's tell you. Cool. So all we do is have problems in our embroidery room and say, Surely other people are struggling with this. What can we do? So yeah. anyway, super fun. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what are we doing? We're working here. Go ahead. Yes. Yes. I think we got excited about the spray tent and uh, we got off of knits a little bit. So, yeah. but it's useful when you're stitching on your knits. The other sure. one I wanted to show here, Eileen, is actually something you know, very different. And honestly, I did this quite a while ago. And whenever I was looking for things that I had already stitched. So this is a sweater knit. It's a cardigan. And I stitched uh, these little designs around the collar. I know black is the worst color to show on the camera, but it's what I had. And this situation, like I wanted to share because um, when I found this in my closet, I wondered how, why in the world did I do that? But obviously, you know, our knits, like we said, they're really soft. And so I actually ironed on the back. Um, are you guys familiar with the type of product? We call it our Fuse So Soft, but there are other ones out there that you actually cover up the back of the embroidery. I actually prepped my fabric with that. And then um, there's no uh, uh, stabilizer left. So I apparently used a wash away adhesive. Since I was working around the, the neckline here, I couldn't put that in a in the hoop. I needed to use the adhesive. But this has actually been laundered numerous times. And um, if you would have asked me uh, if that was a good solution, I would have probably told you no, um, because I think that it needs more stabilizer, but it actually turned out really well. But these designs too, you have to think they are very low stitch count designs. So that makes a difference as well. Um, and so, but I just wanted to share that, you know, sometimes we get creative and it works out and, um, you know, it turns out great. And if it does, and you've got a solution, then, you know, go with what you know works sometimes. So 
but that's just something completely different there. So what do you think? Love, yeah, that's very cool. And I love that sweater. I just love yeah, it. And I know it looks definitely. fabulous on you. Yeah. Hey, going back to the uh, spray tent, look at this idea. So Diamond Crystal, I think she sells diamonds. I've already said that. Um, but anyway, so she, she has two tents. She uses one for the temporary adhesive and the second one for spray painting small craft items. Oh, that's brilliant. Oh, I, I bet that it. one's really colorful. I bet so too. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to have to do that. That's going to be fun. Yeah, that's a great idea yeah, to have uh, really one for each. And that, that actually brings me to another point I was going to comment when somebody said about it getting sticky. Um, yeah. Before I close mine up, um, and I'm sure, Eileen, you do the same, I just make sure that the spray dried, you know, and, right. and like Eileen said, it kind of just kind of, yeah. you know, dissipates or whatever. So then whenever I open my tent the next time, it's, you know, it may be a little tacky if I didn't wait long enough, but most of the time it's just, you know, pops right back open, so... Good. That's a great tip. Yeah. Actually, I never put mine away. So. Oh yeah, I do. I, I, I'm, I'm just in an extra room. And so anytime yeah. I can clean off the tabletops, it's, you know, it's helpful with the next project if I actually do sure. it. <laughs> For sure. Yeah. But mine has its own special space yeah. place. Yeah. Oh, okay. nice. yeah. It's awesome. Mm -hmm. yeah. They love your sweater design. Lots of nice oh, compliments you. on that. Yeah. That's thank from you. our uh, my lace maker. So. Right. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, and, and, and your, uh, um, sweater with the furry sleeves, furry the inspiration sleeves. from your, yeah. yeah. Yep. They don't know about that, but maybe, yeah. maybe they do. Maybe they don't. But yeah. I bet some of them have seen it. Yeah. We won't be wearing that next week. Oh <laughs> yeah. Not quite. <laughs> okay. Well, Hey, Let's talk about placement and all these stretchy okay. knits, right? Yeah, but, sounds good. So um, yeah. I'm going to use my embroiders helper and I'll show how I use it. And then I also have, um, we'll do the little one above the pocket. So like Eileen okay. said, there are actually three versions of the embroider helper. There's the embroiders helper, which is for sizes, small, medium, large, and extra large. And uh, the, the uh, right um, chest is actually printed on the opposite side, all the instructions. And then we also have, have um, what we call the little helper, the LIL helper, little helper. And this one is the above the pocket placement. And then we also have a third one that I don't have my copy here. Eileen will hold that up and show it, but it is the big helper, which is for sizes larger than this one goes. So this uh, embroiders helper is small, medium, large, and extra large. The embroiders big helper actually goes extra large to three XL. So those are the three different tools. So uh, when you're ordering, make sure you're getting the one that you need. So I Eileen's uh, dancing hers uh, there now. Yeah. So yeah, you can see the the difference there. Yep, super fun. Hey, I know what, since we have you, um, well, we're about to have you back on camera. Dawn Tennyson yeah. wants to see your earrings. Oh yeah, so uh, freestanding lace. You guys know us, we love lace earrings. They're so lightweight, you get to use all that beautiful thread. Um, these are just um, the lace charm design collection that Eileen created and it's the feather. And I just stitched uh, like an ombre, a silver, a gray and black. And then I just added uh, some other hardware that I had. So just some silver chain and then staggered those. So yeah. Love the, the freestanding lace earrings, right, Eileen? Yeah. They're, oh, they're so lace. light. I wear them all the time. Yeah. I wear them all the time. They're and just you can so match them to everything. They could match every single outfit yep. because we all have that many thread, right? I know, <laughs> right? Colors. Yeah. And that would be a good use for your rayon thread because you're not going to yeah. launder them. <laughs> That's true. That's right. true. <laughs> okay. So sorry to interrupt right. you. Oh, that's okay. So the the um we can head back over here and we'll talk about the placement. I'll show you how to use that little helper in just a bit. Um, but the regular borders helper, I'm gonna do left chest and look what I've done here. This because this is just you know our cotton knit shirt. It is heat safe. So I chose a fusible no-show. So instead of having to use my adhesive, I fused it. And so look, when I stretch this, it does not stretch anymore. Whereas, you know, our knits, when they stretch. So fusing on that stabilizer just, you know, it helps me just a little bit more. So to use uh, this tool is really simple. In fact, the instructions are printed right on the tool, which could not be easier. Um, so you're going to place it on the fold. I've already folded my shirt in half here. Um, and then just right at the base of the ribbing, 
And then uh, look at the size of your shirt if you don't already know it by heart. So this is a large. So we're going to mark the notch that uh, is a large size. Now, there's a few different things that you could do. You could actually print a template uh, and slide that under here. Um, we use the Target stickers and I usually use uh, my tweezers like this because it's easy to get right under the edge, but a straight pin works too. And so you just place that right there and you're getting that crosshair um, in that opening. And so that's how you get that perfect placement. I think left and right chest to me are one of the most complicated because it always seems like it's either too high or too low when you're just looking at your mark. Um, and so this way um, I can be certain that this is the industry standard uh, placement that I need for my knit. So um, this tool is great, as you can see right on here for shirts that have a um, placket. So no matter which um, you have, or even the collared shirts like we had for our golf shirt. So I've got one here. So, and the same process applies. You're going to uh, line this up. And this actually has a little notch here that you can line up with that button. Mm -hmm. And then uh, make your mark here. Mm -hmm. Just make sure everything's smoothed out mm -hmm. nice and, and flat. And you've got your button there. And then you'll make the mark compared to the size. So this one's a medium. So I would be marking in that opening right there. So. Right. Now I have a tip that I'd like to share. I, oh, you know, make sure you apply your fusible stabilizer to the garment before you put your target sticker down. Yeah. Cause you really don't want to iron that target sticker to the garment. Um, it will remove, but it just isn't good practice, right? Because at one time, you know, that $90 golf shirt, something will happen and it won't remove. Let's see. Right. Um, okay, so let's see. Esther Hoplin said the shirt is a large, but you put the sticker on the extra large. Um, the extra large, if we go back under the camera, mm -hmm. so the extra large notch is out here on this corner. And so the large would be in this opening here and the medium and the small. Yeah. Right. Am I right, yeah. Eileen? Am you I are. And, and maybe they don't see, you know, but, you know, those arrows, there's arrows pointing towards um, what notch. Yeah that you use. So um, anyway, that, that it's clearly explained. So when you have it in your hand, you'll be able to use it. Uh -huh. okay. And see, so let's see, is that a no-show or a no-show mesh? So we use the term no-show and no-show mesh interchangeably. It is the same product and it comes in both fusible and just, you know, non-fusible, right? Yeah, right, so. absolutely. Yeah. yeah, I use that primer, you know, like mm -hmm. that's almost always the one I first grab for my regular knit, like, you know, t-shirts and things like that, that mm -hmm. we're wearing because that's mm -hmm. soft, it's sheer, um, and it, you know, does support quite a bit of stitches, you know, just in its one yeah. layer. Right. And so Carla had a question. Can you use it for V-neck shirt? The embroiderer's helper, uh, no, this is uh, doesn't allow for V-neck. So um, for V-neck, do you have any tips on that, Eileen? I think that just is going to require the measurements, like using yeah. your, your tools. You know to get what I do? I actually, like, um, you know, I just do a workaround. So uh, yeah. I, I would place the embroiderer's helper on a T-shirt and uh, mark that place. And then I put my V-neck on top of that and then just you know, find out where that target sticker is on yeah. the regular t-shirt and then place one right on top of it on the V-neck. That's what I would Ooh, do. Mm -hmm. That's smart. I love yeah. that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Does the crosshair of the target sticker line with the arrow? So Retha, the arrow on the target sticker designates the orientation of the embroidery design. So the arrow always points north, shall we say, or up. So think of the letter M and it always comes up on the embroidery machine as an M and not as a W. So that's what orientation means. You know, in word processing, you have portrait and landscape. In, you know, embroidery, it's X and Y, and but I always do north and south. That's what I do, north, south, east, west, because I think we all understand those directions. Let's see. And um, Brenda wants to know, can you use the helper with a jacket with a zipper? Absolutely. Yeah, Just zip that up and uh, place, you know, the that uh, straight edge, yeah. that straight edge in the middle of the zipper, and you would align this um, little curved notch 
with, you know, the neckline, whether that's a collar or just the edge. Mm -hmm. Yep. So I think we're um, kind of caught up on questions right yeah. now. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Thanks. So, so then the last thing I had is just the, the little helper or the little helper. I always say little <laughs> when it's the little helper. Um, so the little helper um, is for above the pocket placement. And again, um, the smart thing, if you buy a dime tool, I love it when we put the instructions right on the tool. So this little description here tells you how to use it, but I will, uh, I'll give you that tour. So the bottom straight line, if you place that on the pocket, that gives you that nice straight edge and you're centering it on your pocket. So making sure that you've got the same distance either side. And then these marks here have to do with the center of your design. So um, I printed a template. I think it kind of makes a little more sense here. So this is actually an inch tall design. So half of it would be a half inch. And depending on the pocket uh, placement that you want, how far above the pocket, you'll just add that to half of the design. So if you want a um, half inch above the pocket, which I think is kind of that standard, so a half inch and the inch together, then you would place that design just like you see it there. So, and oops, I moved it as I moved it off, but you can see then we've got that placement. The printed design, I think, makes more it, it gives you a good visual, but you could do the same thing with these two tools here. If we centered the pocket. We know that our design, you know, and you could just measure your design, print a copy of it or, or um, you know, if you've created it or, you know, the size from your machine and then your target sticker would then go in that notch too. And you could do the same thing. You could use uh, tweezers or a straight pen to kind of get that right under that, that part. But you're going for that inch area um, because I've added the half inch to uh, the other half of my design. So I'm at that one inch spot for my center of my design. So hopefully that makes sense. Uh, that's a little more in depth there. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, no, that's really very helpful. Um, so let's see, we had um, Tammy Cushman wanted to know, do we have a placement tool for the middle, like center chest t-shirt? So Ooh. for that, we use the perfect placement kit. And in there, we have a tool that is the center chest template. It tells you how to align with the center and the neckline and then where to place the embroidery on the chest. So that's in the perfect placement kit. And then um, we had um, Nancy English wants to jump back to a couple classes ago, but that's all right. She wants to know what kind of stabilizer do we use for towels? I like wash away, tear away. That's what I use on all my towels because it's yeah. going to stay behind the embroidery and yet everything else is going to dissolve. Mm -hmm. So, and then Dara Saylor wants to know, what about peeper? Can you use that little tool helper for these peeper designs? So I think she means those little embroidery designs that yeah. appear to be coming out of a pocket. Yeah. Super cute, right? Right. I don't think that this would be a good choice because this is meant to be above the pocket and you need those little peeper designs to be uh, behind it. Um, but, you know, I guess if you did the opposite, Eileen, and actually subtracted the distance that you needed it to be below, maybe yeah. that would work. What's your thought on that? Well, and you, you definitely want to like center it, right? In yeah. the width of the pocket. So I probably would use it for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see. <laughs> um, all right. I think we're kind of caught up on questions. Um, we did have a question earlier about Snap Hoop Monster, and I just want people to know that we do have warranties on our products. So if you have any issue, please just contact our customer service and they can explain what the warranty covers. But um, we love our hoops and we use them all the time. And we hope that you do too, because um, we wouldn't be embroidering without them. <laughs> that I can verify, <laughs> right? So, yeah, you know, many people want to know how they can be notified that, um, when we're going live. So I thought I would just kind of take you through some simple steps before we get to the uh, OML, uh, the uh, on the house designs. So it's really super easy that how to do this. You can text. Um, I think I have this broken down into three different slides. Yeah. So text dime to two, two, eight, eight, two, 22828. Two, eight. Oh my goodness. Just do that. And then you'll receive a text when we are going live, or you can go to your profile page on Facebook and select the link on the pinned post. 
And then once it's clicked, another page will load. You'll just fill out that information and then you're going to be notified when we go live. And, you know, we know many of you don't want to miss an episode because we always have fun, th fun things going yeah. on here. So we hope that, um, you know, you'll take advantage of that notification. Okay, so we found some really nice designs out on the web that many of you have been doing on our on the house designs. Look what Ginny Barr did with those flip flops. How cute is that? I love that. Very yeah. cool. And I love her towel topper too, or her what? towel holder. I'm yeah. not sure. The topper, the holder, that is gorgeous. That blooming umbrella, I think, came out in April or May. I don't yeah. know, but it was beautiful. And of course, all those designs are still available on our website. So you can take advantage of that, um, you know, from January till this week, and they're going to stay up all year. But look, I love what she did with those patriotic flip flops. Super fun. Super, cute. Super fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And then Ginny's been really busy. She oh, did wow. the skating bird into a mug rug. Smart girl, because so I cute. just had a little coaster. She made it wider. Well, and then bigger. also bloom i like the blue do you like the blue fabric that she used as a border oh absolutely yeah. i think it's gorgeous i also love that design i love the combination of run stitches with you know satins and fills and things just it yeah. ma makes a really cool effect so love that really very well done yeah. um, so i just want to respond debbie white she said she did this last week she said the text didn't receive so we'll look into that for you and um i'll have our my team do that there is a, a code for Hoopa Palooza. All the hoops are on sale, and they'll run that here in the ticker in a little bit for those of you who are asking for that. And then let's see, what else do we have? Oh, Suzanne Timchak. She that. likes those um, patriotic flags too. I think that's on a towel, right? With that border. Yeah, it looks like yeah. it. That's a perfect uh, yeah. for your 4th of July decor. Absolutely. And so today's project is super easy because I know many of you on 4th of July are probably going to hit the road. And so that is a luggage tag. So let me get you a, a closer image of that. Well, here I could probably just, um, well, let's see. We'll, we'll just start with the step outs. And, you know, you're going to receive SVG files, FCM files, and a PDF so that you can pre-cut these materials. You're going to want one for the top of the luggage tag and another one in mirror image for the back. And we have provided you with both, you know, the right and the mirror image so that you don't have to do that step in your cutting software. You're going to place your pre-cut applique yeah, into your spray it. pen, <laughs> right? <laughs> Give it a good spray, yeah. And then uh, stitch the first color of the design, which is an outline, on our heavy-duty water-soluble stabilizer. That's part of the patch attach kit. And then lay down the prepared pre-cut applique and stitch color two, which is the tack down of that outline. And then, of course, you're going to follow the steps for all the pretty colors that are added. And I used hit the road. I mean, I added the text hitting the road. And you can opt to include that or not. It's a separate color. And then you will take the hoop off the machine and flip it upside down. So what you're looking at now is the back of the hoop. And you will have sprayed your other piece of applique. I use the poly patch twill and uh, spray that with temporary spray adhesive so that it's really nice and tacky and then cover the, um, the embroidery work with the prepared. Now notice I put a little piece of tape there because for those of you who don't use spray adhesive, make sure you tape it. When you're placing that hoop back on the machine, it can often have a tendency to, to dislodge from the position that you placed it in. So secure it down with tape. It's easy to remove later. And then finish your design. And it's that easy. Isn't it fun? Yeah, yeah it's so cute. I love I that design. Really Very fun. fun. Yeah. So let's see. Um, okay. Yeah, the, so really nice comments about the today's show. I think that, and keep Diamond Crystal, can you watch this over today? Yes, you can watch this over, you know, it'll be on YouTube and on uh, Facebook. So you would just come to our page, click on videos, and then look for this date on YouTube, subscribe to our channel, 
and then it'll just be right there in you know the post of all the video choices there's tons Esther Hopland, did I use vinyl? No, I used our poly patch twill and um, that's just a great strong material. And here it is, you can see how nice and stiff it is. It's, you know, really will hold its shape as it hangs on a piece of luggage and, and you know, just tie it to your bag, ribbon or a metal chain, whatever you decide. So super fun. So next week, Ashley, I have another guest. I have um, Patricia Gaines from Purely Ooh. Gates coming. I know. So mm -hmm. I'm super excited. She just access, ex accepted this, this morning. So um, I don't have any more details. But you know, we're going to be talking all about embroidery and probably a lot about Mylar. She says she'll right. do some demos and um, it ought to be a lot of fun. Oh, well, yeah. Ashley, oh, fantastic. Yeah, Thank you for uh, being a guest today. You did a great job. You do well, a great you. job for <laughs> everything you do here at Dime. And we're just thrilled to have you part of our team for sure. Thank you. I appreciate the kind words, Eileen. It's always fun to be here and even more so when I get to share the time with you and um, uh, we get to, you know, banter back and forth. I love that. Absolutely. So everybody, happy 4th of July. Celebrate our freedom and our independence. We are blessed to live in America. Absolutely.